Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. We're going to be looking at a crazy one today, man. The Clayface <laughs> Store Mannequin Love Triangle story from Batman Annual 11. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? I have patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics, like this collection of wrestling, pro-wrestling artwork that I've made over the years. Uh, you can also see a lot of my original art, how I make Street Angel. And right now I've been posting about my uh, Red Room cover variants. So you can see sketches, uh, notes on how we decided which covers to do. And uh, the most recent cover, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles homage, is all available there on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Doesn't that A in Ariel just like hurt you when you compare <laughs> it to the Helvetica when people it's are terrible. like... It's terrible. It's the same. <laughs> Tom, what do you have? I have... Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. It's the life story of Jack Kirby, uh, told in the format that Jack Kirby himself worked, in the comic book form. It's uh, his whole life story, everybody he ever met, and anything he ever did. Uh, you can find it at uh, Better Comics and Book Retailers. Uh, you can also check out my Patreon. Uh, search Tom Scholey on Patreon.com. Uh, you can read Fantastic Four Grand Design. Uh, you can uh, watch my YouTube show, uh, Total Recall. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Tom Scholey. You never sleep, Tom. God damn it. Red Room Comics are out in the wild. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the Red Room universe. And as of June 30th, uh, there are two issues that have hit uh, paper editions so far. Going to be coming out every four weeks or so. And you can order or pre-order these comics at the Fantagraphics website if you don't have a cool store locally that you could get it put on your subscriber list. If you want to read the comics ahead of time before they hit paper, you could hit up my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks get you the archive over there. I have well over 100 pages of Red Room comics up there as we speak. Put up new strips every Tuesday. And uh, we're into the fifth issue of comics. So we're uh, we're Alan Moore aficionados, man, yes. of uh, on the cartoonist kayfabe channel. It's no secret. So I thought, uh, why not dust off one of his? Uh, I believe the Brits used the term "cheeky" uh, to describe when guys are uh, pulling ribs, man. Uh, a cheeky issue of Alan Moore Comics, Batman Annual Number Eleven, the Clayface story, where he is in love with a mannequin in in a in a. In a, like a department store, like a Macy's kind of gimmick. And, he, it, the, and the story lays out the relationship between he and his bride, Helena. <laughs> H- had the movie Mannequin come out yet? <laughs> I, like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. This is, I think, 87. So, like, this is post-Watchmen that he's doing this. You know, there's some clout behind him being able to do this story. It's obviously something he wants to do. That's a really nice page one. I like the color. I don't know this artist. I was going to ask, do we know George Freeman? I don't, but I think he does a really good job on this on this on this story. Not bad, not bad. A uh, lot of cool compositions. Um, I get the sense that he's, you know, t- paying heed to those classic Alan Moore scripts that we hear about famously. Uh, you know, f- you know, filling up paragraphs worth of stuff to describe what we're seeing. It's such a ridiculous story. I don't even know where to begin. Like it starts, and they're sitting there, Clayface and his in his uh, in his love, watching TV or whatever. Some Benny Hill or but some things shit. just aren't uh, good. Uh, all in the family. There's Carol O'Connor. Oh, okay. There's Archie they're, Bunker they're, they're, in his uh, in his uh, what's it called? Uh, his um, like water buffalo, like le- yeah, legion. yeah, the the the, the lo- his lodge, yeah. <laughs> which you know, like Alan Moore with all his like Freemasonry uh, obsessions, uh, he had to be like specifying that. Look at the great silhouette of the of the mannequin head. Like it's so it's almost human, and in comics language, you could easily mistake it, but you can't. Like they nail that stiffness <laughs> yeah. of the mannequin. But uh, the romance has gone sour, and so we're going to flash back in the story and see why things aren't better. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what was going on in uh, Alan Moore's marriage, like when he wrote this. Because it crossed my mind. Yeah, the, like the language, the, the descriptions. Even though he's talking about a mannequin, the descriptions are pretty like. You know, like you know, sound like things that somebody's actually going through. It's it's also it's it's like cli- cliche or just like sure. play, playing around with like the the stuff that you see out in the wild, like with the insecure dude who's like insecurity about your g- girl's past or something like this. Man, like he just hits hits all of those tropes in, uh, and it's a whole trajectory of like a love story, but yeah. told through this weird ass character of Clayface and. Uh, and a store mannequin. Well, it's it's got kind of like a psycho, like Hitchcock's Psycho, where it's like a guy 
having these like very uh, strong like interactions with nothing, you know, with just you know a corpse in in Psycho and and, and a mannequin here. Part of the reason why I chose it was because I think it works uh, as good as any of the best episodes of like the animated series, and I was trying to think of like. Like, like, what is that that sort of makes it work? And, and I do think that it is like the self-awareness that the entire enterprise of, of Batman is a little, little goofy. So you got to play that part up. And like we talked about, you know, at other points, um, Batman is a side character. So it's not really his story. You get to explore, you know, this other character, different points of view. So it's, it creates just a fresh vibe for a Batman comic. The best spirit stories barely have the spirit in them yeah. and this is like an example of a marvel version of that and the student of comics that alan moore is he knows eisner yeah you yeah. know he's he's said that exact thing I in think his sum work. that up really well yeah. ed uh what a great panel i just really like the way that panel looks those background elements i can't tell you exactly what they are but they sure feel 80s to me and uh, just a really cool looking character there. So uh, Clayface moved into the local uh, Macy's or whatever, man. And, 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 and there is, we had a normal life and <laughs> him embracing. And, dude, and dude, the fact that this is post Watchmen is funny. But I mean, the cheeky part is he's dry humping a fucking mannequin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's dropping some clay. <laughs> He's dropping some gook. Reminds me of the Ric Flair, uh, the Ric, Ric Flair angle whenever he's making out with that mannequin in the promo. <laughs> <laughs> These shoes cost more than your entire year salary. But you know, they're in the honeymoon phase, Jim. They're in the honeymoon phase. Can't last like that forever. No, she goes missing one night, and when Clayface finds her, she's putting it all out there. What's she doing in the lingerie department? <laughs> I worked with a guy who pronounced it lingerie. I, I've, I know lingerie, man. I know, I know lingerie draws. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And this, this is the straw that broke the camel's back, man. You got this like store security guy, and he's still in like a little ascot off of her or something. But I think uh, Clayface thinks that like he's like hooking her up with it or something like they, they're having some kind of like liaison little tryst and uh that that's it you know the the morality of these kind of stories is kind of like you know the the store guy had to commit some kind of crime even if it was a very minor crime of, of forget you know uh occult compensation uh he, he's now he's got to pay yeah you gotta you gotta keep that comics code approval you know and i mean you can't just kill innocent people <laughs> right <laughs> how about that costume man you know i was always fascinated with this character because i i like saw him in who's who yeah. long before i ever read this and just like reading his history and it's like it is like to a kid it was like a pretty cool costume and and then his the way that he's like he's clayface three yeah there's it's like, a clayface three yeah, yeah there's like two <laughs> other clay faces and the other two clay faces kind of like made sense and see you know like the one has like cool powers and stuff the one just has a mask but then this one it's like it's like my first encounter with like a super character whose like power like kind of sucks, you know. What? When you think of all the characters that exist in, in in comic books, is Clayface the one where it's like I just got to keep going back to him? We're gonna have to have two two Clayface. We're gonna have to have three of them. Like this guy is is gold. <laughs> you, Jimmy, you know we're gonna have to do the mud pack issues. <laughs> yeah, mud pack, uh, yeah, that uh, that Bray Fogel drew, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. Like that's that's considered some Classic. apex Bray Fogel comics. And maybe it'll make me understand the character. <laughs> maybe it's the culmination because it's Mud Pack. You know, you can't oh, have a pack yes. well, if you don't have more than one clay face. It's a faction. From, <laughs> from the who's who, it's like he... It's like Dark Man. Like, he can't touch anybody because if he touches them, they melt into protoplasm. So he's become sort of psychotic from, like, lack of, of contact. And, and uh, you know, there you have it. This is where your triangle develops. Clayface sees that uh, his his mannequin is staring out the window at the bat symbol, mm -hmm. and that's it. And yeah, you just get a couple pages of Batman. <clears throat> yeah, what you were saying, Ed, about kind of the weirdness of Batman and the way Batman works in that weird world, it really comes together here where it's like they've got the building blocked off, and it's like, okay, Send Clayface it. is in there, Batman, go ahead, do, do, do your, your part, right? <laughs> Yeah. Knock him off the ledge. Yeah, yeah. We we we're tired of the the Batman pathos. We we've heard it all. We've heard it all maybe two thousand times in print. 
Let's see. And then like twenty thousand since this comic was published. Yeah. Look at how wonky the uh, the bat symbol is on hmm. his chest in that drawing. I wonder if this George Freeman cat is like a vestige of like two thousand AD. If he's a British guy too. He's really good. Like there are a yeah. lot of good panels, good pages, but little things like that that just are are different. And yeah, this is Batman's specialty. He deals with weirdos. <laughs> yeah. Alan Moore would compare, like he would talk about the Killing Joke as like, you know, hey, why does everybody make such a big deal and say it's like such a great work? It's a trifle. And I feel like, you know, he would probably compare it to this. Like, he, like he's obviously just approaching this just to kind of have a little fun. And like he's not, he's not trying to create. He's not trying to create Watchmen here. You the, know, the definitive Clayface story. <laughs> <laughs> the, the definitive Clayface three story. I love this this drawing. I think it's, it's really one. great of Batman straddling those two lights. Up this above. is pretty severe too. Like Batman doesn't yeah. kill anybody, but. He, he will step on your head with both feet full force. Then he picks up the head and goes another round. Like, if, if there's human brain in there, he's really hurt this dude. He knows that you can't concuss a guy who has a skull that's as, you know, hard as a crayon or whatever. Wrapped in a plastic bag. Yeah. I mean, this, like... Any... There's a lot of Ric Flair wrestling angles here. You're right. I reminded of Terry Funk. <laughs> yeah, man, I saw that when I was a little dude. Any, um, like, Alan Moore doing, like, DC superheroes, is it's like it's like the gold standard. Like, some of my favorite comics are that. And then, like, for whatever reason, this this one isn't. You know, like, like I don't know what it is that, that makes this one not quite hit with me the way every single one of his others, like, you know, in this format do. It, it's like he's, he's pushing, like, he's, he's testing the limits. It's, it's mm-hmm. almost like if, you know, if you're, like, you know, little Lord Fauntleroy or something, and you just did this great thing. Well, let's see what DC thinks of this. It and does let's see feel like a bet. You know, yeah. like Stan Lee saying we can sell anything and making Sergeant Fury. This feels like, man, like a weird, weird classroom assi- home, homework assignment or something for Alan Moore. Yeah, maybe there's something that he's referencing that we're just not aware of the reference. You know, something really you know, yeah, obvious. Yeah, that wouldn't be surprising. It'll come through the comments if, if that's the case, man. You see these uh, surveillance cameras, which implies Arkham Asylum or something, you know? They give you some nice digs there, dude. That's like those like bougie ass uh, rehab centers or whatever. It's so ridiculous, and it's like Batman put in the good word with his doctor in order to get her uh, get, get that co-ed room for them. And and like we're back where the story started. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, one of those things that Alan Moore uh, always talks about as being like one of his early shortcomings is the bookend uh, bridge sequence. And also, man, if. Uh, Arkham Asylum is about rehabilitation and fixing somebody. This feels like enabling to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I know we're not going to go through the next story. I think this could be uh, Bray Fogel's first Batman. Oh, cool. I don't right. know if that's true or not. It's definitely the year that he starts on Batman. I couldn't find what the first issue is, but if you look, like I was a Bray Fogel fan, this is a far... Yeah, like, he's this not is a full on Bray Fogel. Bray Fogel. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's different. Absolutely, man. Also written by Max Allen Collins, who was one of my favorite uh, Batman writers when I, when I was a little dude, man. Uh, perhaps we'll go through this on its own one day, but this was a Read More Comics episode, and we had to give... The Clayface, Helena, Helena, Love Triangle story, its own shine. Bizarre. Kay Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there, man? Join me at patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download my out-of-print zines and minis. You can see my original art, how I make Street Angel, and all the comics I make at patreon.com slash jimrug. Buy Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. Buy Fantastic Four, Grand Design. Check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. Red Room Comics out in the wild as we speak, man. Two issues as of June 30th. Uh, new comics hit the shops every uh, 30 days. Um, you can order, pre-order these comics at the Fantagraphics website in the description below this video by way of my link tree. You could also go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks gets you the archive and you can read Red Room Comics before they hit the stands. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give these guys one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>